Hi, this is Dr. Bay, and this is Bugsy, and today we're going to go over catalytic hydrogenation of alkenes. We'll delve into the reaction stereospecificity as well as the catalyst's role. Organic chemistry, taught by Dr. Bay. Reaction mechanisms, reactants to products, retrosynthesis, target deconstructing, molecules, spectroscopy. Pouring through the sky, triumphantly fly, give rise to the complexity of mind. Living on a dream across the seven seas, learning about spectroscopy. Catalytic hydrogenation is the process of reducing an alkene to an alkane in the presence of a metal catalyst like platinum. Paul Sabatier won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1912 for his method of hydrogenating organic compounds in the presence of disintegrated metals. But why is this process important? Well, especially in petrochemical processes, hydrogenation is used to saturate alkenes and aromatic compounds to make them less toxic and reactive. Hydrogenation is also used in processing vegetable oils because most of them are derived from polyunsaturated fatty acids. One example of this is how margarine is made. Margarine is a nice, spreadable, semi-solid butter created from vegetable oil, which is typically an unsaturated liquid at room temperature. But the process of partial hydrogenation, which adds hydrogen atoms and reduces double bonds in the vegetable oil, changes important physical properties like its melting range. But let's get into the chemistry. So all catalytic hydrogenations use molecular hydrogen or H2 gas to interact with the surface of a metal catalyst. There are a bunch of different types of metal catalysts that can be used like palladium or PD, platinum or PT, or even nickel or Ni. They all work in the same way where each alkene is reduced to an alkane. All double bonds in a molecule, with the exception of double bonds in aromatic molecules like benzene, will be reduced to single bonds in a catalytic hydrogenation reaction. Now the role of the catalyst is as follows. In this example, we are using palladium as our metal catalyst, which is represented by yellow spheres to create a metal surface. Then H2 gas comes in and the HH bonds break to form individual hydrogen atoms adsorbed to the surface of the metal. Next, the alkene comes in and coordinates with the metal surface through its pi bond. And then both hydrogen atoms are added across the pi bond on the same face of the alkene, which is called syn addition, which we'll get into more details on that in a bit. And with that, you eventually get to the final product of an alkene which gets released from the catalyst surface. So as I mentioned earlier, both hydrogen atoms add to the same face of the alkene through syn addition. But what exactly does that mean? In example A, the final product contains no chiral centers, so the syn requirement isn't relevant and only one product will be formed. However, in example B, when we reduce the double bond to a single bond, we've created one chiral center. This means that both possible enantiomers R and S are formed. In example C, we produce two chiral centers, which means the requirement for syn addition determines which pair of enantiomers are formed. Both H's in the left product are on a wedged bond, while both H's in the right product are on a dashed bond, which means they are enantiomers. Keep in mind that no diastereomers are formed because that would break the requirement of syn addition. Now, if catalytic hydrogenation occurs on a meso compound, syn addition on one face of an alkene in a meso compound actually gives the same compound as if a syn addition occurred on the other face of the alkene. This means that meso compounds do not have enantiomers and they would only form one product. So in conclusion, catalytic hydrogenations turn alkenes into alkanes using molecular hydrogen and the surface of a metal catalyst like platinum, palladium, or nickel.
And both hydrogen atoms add on to the same side of the alkene via syn addition, which is particularly important if your resulting product contains a chiral center.